The Bible predicted today's sickness. The Bible also predicted that God would save his best acts for our time. That's right. And so it says, the day will come when the plowman will overtake the reaper. And that means that the crop was so massive that it wasn't gathered in by September and it wasn't gathered in by October. And in November and December and in January and in February, the harvesters were still out in the field and all the crop was so massive that it wasn't gathered in. And lo and behold, when they came to plow the ground, they saw that the harvesters were still there. See, the, the church believes that there is a mechanical way to evangelize. There are mechanical ways. We don't realize that it is supernatural. Soul winning is supernatural. And what is amazing about it is that tonight the plowman is going to overtake the reaper. That means that people are going to get saved without an 18-point sermon on the Christian faith. Not that it isn't important, but I'd rather teach you doctrine after you're saved and no longer going to hell. How many of you know the lifeguard isn't going to explain how to swim to a drowning victim? He's going to go and get him, and that's what I'm going to do. You see, it's not my fault that you came tonight, and I'm going after you. And those songs that we sang tonight that Rachel led us in, it's not a joke for me. Because I've been doing what that song says for 54 years. Even when the church told me not to, I kept going after the lost. I kept going after the broken and the, the forgotten. I want to read a verse of scripture. I sought the Lord, verse 30, Psalm 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. I want you to look at that for a moment and listen to one point. The first thing that God gets rid of is your fear. The second thing he gets rid of is your problems. There's a moment in Jesus where the fear of your problems goes away. You can't explain it. They've tried for 2,000 years to diagnose the joy of the Lord. They've tried. Psychiatrists have analyzed it. They've looked at it and said, why, even before the bill is paid or the disease is healed or the sickness and the addiction is broken, why is there this thing that comes on people that says, why do I know that everything is going to be all right? Now, I'm going to tell you what everybody's missing today because I've got to move fast. I've got too much to do. We live in a day where people say, I identify as, and then fill in the blank. And it sounds so imaginative it sounds creative but it is the worst cry for help that you could possibly have now the bible says this poor man cried to the lord there's not a person in this room without a cry i don't know what yours is but you have it and it's deep and it's real and it hurts you every minute of every day you can't even put it into words identity what is the deal with this fixation with identity. That everyone is trying to find identity. And I want to thank the Christian Television Network right now. And Brother Paul, this is going out on the Christian Television Network live right now all over the world. Millions are watching. Millions are watching right now. This poor man 
cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard him and delivered him. Now stop. You want me to be profound? Let me tell you. Identity is everything. Identity is everything. I could go on and on and on and tell you that you don't have a right to define yourself because you were created. Somebody told you what you were. You're just not listening. Somebody told you why you were born. You're not listening. And you're paying a price. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 32 that Jacob was left alone. You know that he had the deepest cry for identity of anyone I know of in the Bible. He stole his identity from his brother. He lived his life with an undercurrent that he wasn't legitimate and valid. Our society right now, because it sells clothes and food and products, must make you feel like you're not valuable. You think that all of this talk, when you hear a jingle or a commercial, is about making you feel valuable. It's about making you feel worthless. That without what we're selling you, you are nothing. Unless you agree with this, you are nothing. And they have succeeded so well in telling Americans that they are nothing that we no longer even know what gender we are. Am I preaching yet? Now the Bible tells us that Jacob saw God and something gripped him. You know, in the meetings that I conduct in our tent, and by the way, I'm giving you the greatest compliment I possibly could. I'm treating you like a tent crusade crowd tonight. That's what I'm, you are a tent crusade crowd. Because I've, I've got to be that way. When God appears, one day Jesus was asked, what in the world is going on with John the Baptist, who broke every law of preaching and fashion and real estate that there is? He chose the worst location, wore a camel hair suit, had a, a locust leg stinging out of his lip. And when the crowd did show up, he didn't welcome them and flatter them and tell them, about all the good things he was going to say. He said, you generation of vipers. And thousands came to hear him. What was up? And they asked Jesus what it is. There is a collision. A collision between God and your hurt is the most shocking moment you will ever have. Don't tell me you go to church. Don't tell me you believe in God. I don't believe you understand what it means to be converted, to be transformed, to be raised from the dead, to have all that doubt and fear and perversion wiped out in a moment and Christ taking total control. You know, there's something wrong with me because I've never felt inferior in any university campus. I've never met a professor that intimidated me. I've met hardly any where I didn't feel pity Because the Bible said that God has made foolishness out of the wisdom of the world. So Jacob, Jesus said, if you want to understand John the Baptist, the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You know that God is everything you ever wanted and you don't know it? And your, your desire for him is so profound that you've diverted it. What you think is in a video game, what you think is in a celebrity rock band or a pop artist, the worship, the idea, these, these special effects films, that they're all playing on something that's artificial. It's an echo. It's a shadow of the reality. Reality is that you're crying out for God. You're crying out for God. I want to know God. And you're safe as long as you're not around a true display of God. You're safe. But when all of a sudden, the Spirit of God falls on a generation, people lose their power to resist it. 
Paul said it is so dangerous that Satan works to blind people. He said God of this world has blinded those who do not believe. Lest they should see the light of the gospel. Lest that moment that says this is what I've always wanted. This is what I've always needed. This is what I've been crying for. This is why I stick a needle in my arm and put powder in my nose and join a gang and pervert myself and put and scar my body and cut myself. I'm doing it because I'm crying out for something. I don't know who I am. So today I might think I'm a man or I might think I'm a woman. But the fact is you are screaming. And Jesus said, look out when a love-starved culture collides with an outpouring of God's love. And you know what? It's happening in America right now.